Hi all, and especially Shivam. If you want that cutthroat everybody falls together feel from your hellbent Rakdos deck, I recommend the Scandal Monger. <laughs> For three and a black, you get a creature monger. Boar monger. monger. For two generic mana, if I target can. player discards a card. Any player may activate this ability, but only any time he or she could cast a sorcery. When you say it over and over again, monger is a weird it's, word. I think it's a weird Scandal word monger. the first time you say it. Monger. Unless you're a cheesemonger. Cheesemongers are amazing. I like cheesemonger. I'm also a fan of fishmongers. Ooh, fishmonger is a good oh. word. Well, fishmonger is my favorite. It's a mong mandarin. Your favorite manga-based <laughs> podcast. That's manga, not manga. <laughs> Kamongerin. It's Kamongerin. That sounds really racist. This week, we talk what's better, fish, cheese, or war. Don't forget scandals. <laughs> Please do not mix your fish and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, episode recording an episode of Kamongerin. Yeah. All right, shall we? Are we? You want to? <laughs> we should. <laughs> There's some pretty good preview material in that. Uh, so yeah, maybe maybe we'll do a pre-roll with some of that mongering. <laughs> <laughs> all mongering, all the time. That's right. Here at W A R N, all we do is monger. We monger jazz. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we've got some cool Dizzy Gillespie. But before that, Commander in MTG Podcast with Phil, Sean, and Shivam. That's right. We are Commander in. Ding 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 That's the best intro ever. We need to keep that. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Yeah, that's uh, that's got to be kept. That's got to be kept. Do we do the whole show with no, local fry? <laughs> we just got back from Vegas after a weekend of sounding exactly like that. <coughs> I'm pretty good now, man. Thanks for listening. We are back from Vegas, and these are our voices. Really <laughs> natural. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> On that note, well, uh, he's Shivam Butt. He's Phil oh, DeLuca. No, we already did that. <laughs> All right. And he's Sean Watson. And we are Commander. And we are Commander. Commander. <laughs> but not the Mandarin. <laughs> because the Mandarin. No, not really the bad, Mandarin. Uh, bad guy from Iron Man. Mm. Oh my yeah. God, that would be amazing. The Mandarin. Well, th- we chose Commanderin because of its flexibility. And specifically because we could always go with a Mandarin sub-theme if we wanted to go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. We're feeling a little goofy tonight because we are just back from GP Las Vegas. And we normally put a spotlight on community issues and never, ever talk about four banned topics. Religion, politics, Hearthstone, and hip-hop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. I just went goofy in my head. And... Visit patreon.com slash commander and M- commander and MTG to donate to the show and stop us from this level of goofiness. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, and don't forget to visit us on YouTube. We will be posting brand new videos, almost none of which. Well, we'll, well this one will be posted, but most of them uh, will be from GP Las Vegas and mm. the, the trip on the way there. Sean, I did take a look at that first one we recorded outside of Frankenstein, and it's pretty funny. Oh, is it good? <laughs> yeah, Excellent. yeah. Excellent. But this is not the GP Las Vegas show. This is actually the Hour of Devastation Commander and Preview Card Show. Yay, my first preview card. Yeah, Yay. it is. I'm super excited. This is such a cool card. 
Sean, when the time comes, should Shivam read the card? I think he should. Or, or are we just going to blurt it out? <gasps> no, let's let Shivam read it. Yeah. Let him read it because it sounds like this is his last night on Earth. Yeah, seriously, dude. <laughs> I brought home half the desert in my throat. I'm not even going to lie. Oh, I... Yeah. <laughs> and and the other half of your throat was, was scorched out. Man, there's something about Ooh. the fact that we were only outside for like 15 minutes and you could feel your lips blistering. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like... Yeah, that was... What in God's name have we gotten ourselves into? <laughs> I got off the plane in England, and England's having a, quote, heat wave, and it was literally <laughs> half the temperature that it was where we were. I mean, I'll be honest with you guys, it certainly, every time we opened that door, it definitely felt like we were opening a gate to the afterlife. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what happened when you opened the gate to the afterlife, guys? <laughs> what happened, Shivam? I mean, I'm not just saying, I'm just saying that when you open that door to the gate of the afterlife, you might find yourself with the God Pharaoh's gift. Oh, no, 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 no. We wouldn't find ourselves with that. And you know what that God Pharaoh's gift is? Infinite suns blistering your lips instantaneously <laughs> while you eat sand. <laughs> oh, my God. And scorpions. All the sweltering and... suns. All the sweltering suns. You know... And then you go to Denny's late late at night, and you get the and real gift go of the Denny's. God Pharaoh, pain. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, before we get to our card, <coughs> we should take a quick look at the mechanics from Hour of Devastation. Yeah. So, we are in the midst, actually, we're in the midst right now, as folks listen to this, of the Hour of Devastation preview week. So by now we've seen a bunch of really cool cards, but not as cool as this one. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I got to participate in GP Las Vegas in the ma uh, Massive Magic uh, preview event where I was on Team Bolas versus the Gatewatch. Yeah. And we sat and we got to play with two decks of gigantic oversized cards that had a lot of the mechanics from this uh, set in it. Uh, su such as uh, one of the coolest ones I found was uh, Mega Embalm or as they call it, Eternalize, where Eternalize. Um, when your <clears throat> creature dies <laughs> uh, you and goes to the graveyard, you can pay a certain amount of mana and bring it back to the table, except instead of Embalm, which brought them back identically, Eternalize turns them into 4-4 four, four black zombies plus whatever text is on the card. <clears throat> yeah. One of the preview cards that we saw and that was really neat uh, was... When you attack with this card and it does damage, uh, target uh, the opponent l discards a card equal to the amount of damage this card did. And when you eternalize him, that means instead of doing the one point of damage he was doing before, now you're making your opponent discard four cards a turn. That is pretty brutal. That is brutal. And it's good. the other really cool card that I actually liked a lot was uh, the afflict mechanic, which is kind of like one of the Punisher mechanics, but this is the first one that actually feels really good, which is um, you put these, these are on the uh, bolus colored creatures, the uh, black, red, and blue ones, and whenever they're blocked, you the target player who blocked them loses X amount of life, depending on what the afflict number is. So, for instance, if I attack you with a 2-2 that has afflict 4, you might uh, either take the 2 points of combat damage, or or you block and lose four life anyways. And generally, hmm. the way these things have been made to trade off is that if I get <laughs> if I get through unblocked, then you are going to have some crazy negative effect, which means you have a really bad choice to make. Lose life or lose your card or take control or give me an extra combat or whatever nonsense they came up with. One note about Eternalize before we go too far. Uh, in Matt Tabak's article... They he pointed out that the creatures with Eternalize tend to be very small. So you pay that extra <coughs> price after they're they're dead, and you bring them back, and now they're what they were, but even larger and buffer. Grr. Buffer. <laughs> and I have a feeling it's going to play really well with Embalm and uh, like yeah. Anointed Procession and all of those really great uh, token themed stuff from the first set. And it's going to be super fun, I think. That is, in fact, the uh, 
the god pharaoh's true gift isn't it more bodies hitting the floor why yes well and then coming back as four fours yeah i mean it's a really unique number i wonder why they chose that it seems to have a very Hmm. specific idea to it but um (laughs) you know what else you can do you can force your guys to get really really stressed out and angry how would you do that shiva by exerting them but unlike in (laughs) amonkhet where you could just exert when they were attacking and make them do extra things this time you can exert to have extra abilities show up when you tap them so like the preview Mm. card at the event was a a mana elf which you could tap to get you know your mana or you could exert it to get two mana and we saw some actually really neat preview cards earlier this week uh there was an angel who was like you know tap and do something to tap down a creature or exert it to uh, banish your priest to creature, which I thought was just incredible, especially if you happen to have s- stuff that'll let you untap your guy. <coughs> I don't know. Exert seems really sick now. When you exert while tapping, do you have to say, I tapped this really hard? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just checking for a friend. Turn it all the way around. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking like, you know what, man? If, if your exhortation lasts for more than four hours, you should see a doctor. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we wouldn't want to, you know, stress out your heart here. But speaking of GP Las Vegas, the other main theme. <laughs> the rest of the mechanics, we have deserts returning, but even more so as a, 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 a cycle of colored, not colored lands, but that produce colored mana. And uh, they are cyclers as well. That's a returning mechanic. And then we have some stuff that cares about deserts. And we haven't seen all of those yet. No, but, but they look really cool. Couple. I don't know how useful yeah. they'll be in Commander, but definitely in Limited they're going to be really neat. Yep. Well, it is time, isn't it, gentlemen? We've exhausted the mechanics, unless we want to talk about them a little bit more and tease our listeners. Nah. Um, we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about GP Vegas, right? Because that's its own separate show. So here we are. Uh, our preview card. Now, before we say the name of our preview card again. <laughs> now our listeners are like, what did they say? Oh my goodness. But I think some of them got it already. Mm. If you've got it, stop right now, tweet it, and then come back. Because <laughs> we'll be able to tell. <laughs> you you want to talk about a card that is very similar to another card that in turn enables our preview card? Go ahead, Sean. Oh, yeah, this the, is a blue card. Uh, <clears throat> renowned Weaponsmith. Right. Yes, it's uh, a little uncommon from Fate Reforged. It's for one of the blue creature, human artificer. Uh, tap, add two mana to your mana pool, generic mana. Spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or activate the abilities of artifacts. Or for a blue and a tap, search your library for a card named Heart Pierce Bow or Vile of Dragonfire. Reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. That's right. And it's similar to another card that was recently released that sort of also tutors up a certain card. <laughs> What, Gate to the uh, Afterlife, you mean? Yeah, so Gate to the Afterlife. I'll read that one since Shivam's going to read the actual card, right? Mm. It's a 3CMC artifact. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, you gain one life. Then you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. So that's kind of an interesting chain of effect of events there. And uh, may or may not work very well with this particular other God, card. Why would you want to put things For, into your yard in this set? I don't know. For two and tap, you can sacrifice Gate to the Afterlife, search your graveyard, hand, and or library for a card named God Pharaoh's Gift and put it onto the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. Activate this ability only if there are six or more creature cards in your graveyard. So you have to have a stocked uh, graveyard to use this. It's weird because in... I've never heard of a card called God Pharaoh's Gift. Uh, certainly wasn't one no. in Hammond Cat. I thought that was just the, the heat of the sand of Las Vegas when you opened the door to the hotel. <laughs> the God Pharaoh's Gift was the heat of the sand. Oh, dude, yeah. it was pretty 115 degrees of face blistering. But you know what else God Pharaoh's <laughs> Gift is? What? A seven mana casting cost artifact. What? 
a rare from Hour of Devastation, perhaps? What? A card that says... What? We haven't seen this card before. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may Ooh. exile a creature card from your graveyard. Perhaps the one that just died to your gate to the afterlife. Hmm. And if you do, create a token that is a copy of that card, except it is a 4-4 four, four black zombie. Gosh, did we dun, hear about dun, that dun. earlier today? I can't remember. We did. And it gains haste until end of turn. This is the Eternalizer. Yeah, but do you know what this card <laughs> doesn't say, Phil? It what? It doesn't say this card goes away at the end of the turn. That's you right. Keep your token. As it happens, you keep that your token. little eternal zombie is here until he dies for real. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. This card is sick. It's the, First off, seven mana casting costs is pretty prohibitive, unless you're playing commander, at which point this is like turn three. <laughs> um, <laughs> and... <laughs> Gate to the Afterlife has the uh, clause that you need to, you know, stock yourself with six or more creature cards in your graveyard, which in our format, really not that hard if you've got Ashna's Altar hanging around, Wheel of Fortune hanging around, other just, I don't know, does Marin have a way to put trash in the trash? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm just saying there's <laughs> certainly ways to get your friends into the bin. I mean, maybe yep. a Demir player might know how to put some crap into the graveyard. Maybe Sidisi wants to spawn some spiders. But you know what else Sidisi could do? She could make those spiders into 4-4 four, four black zombies with haste at the beginning <laughs> of combat every turn. And actually, it doesn't yeah. say the first combat phase. So if you happen to have a combat celebrant or somebody who gives you infinite yes. uh, combat, maybe you've just got a whole grip of infinite zombies coming your way. Seems like yeah, a I'd good idea. I'd be tempted idea. to put this into my Aurelia deck. Yeah, this seems this seems pretty busted, especially if you're pitching tiny little dudes, like I don't know, cards that have really neat enter the battlefield effects, but have really crappy bodies that you want to get a second use out of. Maybe someone like Academy Rector. I don't know. Maybe um, mm, Academy Rector exiles itself when you get its true. Ooh, fair, fair. I don't know. How about I don't know Sakura Tribelder? There's a card everybody uses that you would love to get a second use out of. Get a second use out of with a four four body. A four four body is pretty baller. <laughs> when all those soldiers in my deck start dying and coming back as hulking zombie doom, that's pretty great. Baleful Strix. Oh my god! Oh, yeah. card and have a four four flying <laughs> oh death god. touch. I'm just saying that that there's there's options here. Did you mention Solemn Simulacrum? Oh god, Solemn Simulacrum! Can you imagine how amazing that would be? Right? Oh my god. Like <laughs> that sounds stupid, Phil. That's not right at all. It is not right. But it is you know what right. else is tricky that I was thinking about? Because I was just looking at this card because I wanted to put it into Brea was a Marionette Master and all the fabricate cards Ooh. from uh Kaladesh mm. that all come into play with like, you know, one ones or whatever and say when it comes to play you can put one one counters on it or get tokens or what have you. And if for some reason you're Marionette Master who uh, does extra damage based on how many pluses he has, goes to the bin, and you bring him back with the God Pharaoh's gift, and suddenly you have like a 7 7 8 8 uh, crazy marionette master that with tokens that's doing insane things. This can get seven, pretty dumb. Four. Oh, it was 7 8. Yeah, this could get pretty dumb really quickly. Hmm. Like, I don't know. I think the combo potential for this card is just stupid. It's going to be so yeah, much fun. So when I looked yep. up, I thought, take your small utility creatures aside. This is a, a card that really shines in any deck that doesn't use heavy recursion engines. So you probably don't want it in Golgari decks because they rely on being able to get your creatures back from the yard. And if you're exiling them, it's not great. But any other deck where you want extra use from your enter the battlefield and leave the battlefield triggers... This is an absolute shining star, um, and it's an artifact as well, so it doesn't rely on black or white to do that. Uh, so I'm thinking things like big, splashy, enter the battlefield effects, like the Primordial Cycle, the Titan Cycle, Gear Hulks, 
Oh Anything like Can you like imagine that. a Verderous Gearhawk coming back from the grave yeah. with this guy? Yeah, yeah. it's great. Um, so Polkor Primordial, bring it back and then whip in extra stuff from opponent's graveyards. I mean, you would have already cast the Primordial once, or even in a discard deck where you're chucking stuff away. You know, this is effectively a free cast of one of those cards. Right. Um, yeah. So like my Demir decks, uh, Sumgar and Lazav, don't outside like living death and rise of the dark realms which are really kind of finishes i don't actually run too much pinpoint recursion so i run some pretty amazing into the battlefields or even combat triggers like lord of the void well if i get a sudden lord of the void with haste from out of nowhere and someone's not got a uh, flying defender then bam i'm having the top seven off their deck exiled and casting a creature from it it's pretty yeah, that's pretty good <laughs> pretty pretty good um rules question mm -hmm. so if i whip a clone back right does the clone's ability override sorry if i gift a clone back rather than whip it does the clone's rules ability override the four four bit yeah i think yeah it does. because it becomes a copy of so i think it yeah i think it just makes clones basically have reusable recursion with haste i mean that's not terrible right like <laughs> pulling your clone back from the grave just to be able to clone a thing seems pretty amazing especially with haste especially if you're say cloning their progenitus or something absurd uh well maybe not progenitus with the pro protection from everything but you know what i mean <laughs> um I don't know, cloning Heliod or Perforos or oh gosh, can you imagine this with Perforos? That would be fun. Or um if you use it with like Brian Stout Arm and you've got your four four guys suddenly sitting around and you can just pitch them to the dome again. Um Man, this could be silly. This could just be really, really silly, especially with yeah. like duplicators. Like things that give you doubling season type of stuff, populate type of things. Uh, gosh, I'm just getting excited thinking about this, especially yeah, like anointed good. procession and just, hey, how about a whole grip of four four hasty zombies? So now we've got um, anointed procession. Oh, so I good. think Esper zombie tokens is a really solid build. Yeah, I think so. Who would you use to lead mm -hmm. a Nexar? Esper, it doesn't matter. Oh, Esper, Esper. Um, I would use Send Triplets who or Loro. Who would you use for an Esper? Send Triplets. Build? Send Triplets? Yeah. If you're on a budget, it's a Loro. If you're not, it's Send Triplets. Because Send Triplets is just a great utility card. Mm. That, that coincidentally, uh, or I should say that not coincidentally, draws a lot of hate. So if you're going to be playing some beaters or even some really fine utility cards that you want to stay on the battlefield, when Send Triplets comes out, she's in trouble. And that's good because you just lured the uh, the removal. Yeah, you dragged it away. Yeah. But then you could get your zombies and you could get your clones in there as well. Oh, zombie clone deck. Look at you, Sean. That looks like mm. it would be stupid fun. I am not even lying. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Um, we're going to take a break, listeners, and we're going to start brewing Esper Zombies. <laughs> yeah, like, like, this sounds hella good. I am not even joking. Um, I've been, because I've been thinking about what? Esper decks for a while, but a lot of Esper decks are not, I mean, let's see. Like, yeah, a lot of control or artifacts. Uh, Sharoom you could do stuff with. I mean, maybe it wouldn't be as good of an idea to bring back, like, Worm Coil Engine as a 4-4 zombie, but, um... Like Mariki Ruberit could be cool. Uh, Sidri could be cool. Mm, I think that's just your head, Phil. All I know is that uh, I'm going to be playing Dak and Blackblade and bringing zombies back from the dead. And that's just going to be Black it. Blade. <laughs> uh, so the gift couples very well with Panharmonicon, but you know, what does oh, Yeah. Because you're you're pulling in a lot of Enter oh my the god, dude! If effects. you're gonna do an Esper clone zombie deck, you have to go get Haftane. Do you remember him from Legends? Yeah, one and <laughs> Esper. He's a comes into play as a three three, and then during your upkeep, you can uh, copy a power and toughness of target other creature. Uh, 
every turn, like Vesuvian doppelganger style. Wow, we need mm-hmm. to. I think we need to make this deck, man. I think this is going to be baller. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> listeners, if you have any advice for us making this deck, let us know, uh, and we'll see if we can roll it into the brew that we put together. Or with like Rava um, Soltender, the uh, the Orzov colored partner who can bring a, at the beginning of your upkeep a target creature from your graveyard back to your hand, so that if you don't want to bring him into play immediately as a four four zombie with. With you haste, can, you can pump them back to your hand and then play them again so and then I'm pitch them again and then bring them back as a 4-4 zombie. Yeah. This is this card is going to be so good in so many so many dumb things. You're not suggesting people abuse into the battlefield effects. Oh my god, I would never suggest such a thing. But if I did, <laughs> I would say the Panharmonicon would be pretty great with this. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. So before, <laughs> I'm sorry you're making me laugh. Now. This card is so um, good, dude. It's like, yeah, it's well, expensive, but who cares? This commander, the game doesn't start till turn yeah. twelve, anyways. Well, sometimes I have to wait till turn five in my black green decks to cast this. Yeah, gosh, <laughs> life is hard. I know. Um, it, it's important to remember though that it comes back as a four-four black zombie, and even though we were trying to get around that with the clones, if you have something like, I don't know, let me pick something at random, Terastodon in your graveyard. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, then Damn. it comes back, but only, it, it's going to get its end to the battlefield effect and it's fine, but it's not going to be very large at all. It's only a 4-4 four, four Yeah, Terastodon. but you still just turn three things into not things. No one yeah. ever swings your Terastodon. That's not why you play that card. No. <laughs> Think about bringing back something no. like, I don't know, Crater Hoof. Who would do that? I mean, Crater Hoof's not going to be great, but it's still free. Free is still No, here you free. go, Shivam. You cast Crater Hoof, sack it oh, at the beginning is... of combat, bring it back. <laughs> oh, my God. And then, with and then your, since you already know, have Pathbreaker team. Ibex on board. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> you cast Crater Hoof, you pitch him to, like, I don't know, Ashno's Altar or something, and yeah, then whatever. you bring him back with Doubling Season in play, and... Suddenly you have and parallel lives in play, and now we're in magical Christmas land with four yes. friggin' crater hoofs that are all zombie hasty and mega gigantic. <laughs> and then I don't know, stick blade of selves on him and then just go to town. Ladies and gentlemen, listen. This is the best. At this moment, Holy crap. you should pause and you will hear the sound of sleigh bells ringing. <laughs> 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 If not for Magical Christmas Land, I'd have no land at all. Imagine Bolas in his Santa outfit, delivering gifts for all the children. <laughs> oh. The God Pharaoh's Mommy, gift. it's a Christmas Bolas! <laughs> this is the best all kind of All children gift. were sleeping, all through the house, nobody was stirring, except for Nickel Bolas, who will destroy you. <laughs> God praise the God Pharaoh. Deck the halls with four four zombies. <laughs> la, 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 la. Bring them back until you're dying. La, 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 la. Jesus. Get double uses from your ETB effects on your best creatures. <laughs> this is the best gift ever. <laughs> it is. It's Christmas in June. <laughs> hey, you don't know when they celebrate Christmas in Amon Ket. It might be June. That's true. It might be June. Look, man, when is the desert every day is June? <laughs> you know, this is one of those moments when, like, if we were some other podcast one of their listeners would draw a Christmas bolus. <laughs> a Santa bolus. Handing out, like, dead yeah. bodies to his children. Well, yeah, who knows? Uh, we would just rename it Bolmas, wouldn't we? It's quite the gate to the afterlife. <laughs> Wishing you all a happy Bolmas on the 26th of June. <laughs> Bolmas. Bolmas. Yes. <laughs> Nicole Bolmas. That is exactly what the the day you get the God Pharaoh's gift. The God Pharaoh says, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so we should we should put that at the beginning of the show, <laughs> that 
It's Mary Bulmas. It's Nickel Bulmas. Mary Bulmas, <laughs> everybody. Mary Bulmas, everyone. <laughs> oh, now my wife is yelling at me because the baby is trying to sleep. <gasps> oh God! <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. We 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 have had angry wives on mic several times throughout the history of the show. Not not a fan. She just gives me death. No, stories. not a fan. Some. Oh. I, uh oh. I, I get the feeling that I'm going to be going through the gate to the afterlife very soon. <laughs> yeah, if we're not careful. <laughs> but gate to the afterlife, though, it's just worth remembering that whenever a non-token creature, th- this card cares about getting your creatures into the graveyard for a reason. And that reason is to get your gift later. Because Bolas is yep. a terrible person. He doesn't give you gifts. He makes you give them to yourself. <laughs> You get your gift but on. God knows there's no such thing as self mill in uh, in any kind of EDH, is there? Hey, hey, this is a family podcast. I can't imagine why there would be any reason for your entire deck to be upside down in your graveyard. And so that brings us to some of the commanders that work really well with this. And so we know Carador is going to like it, even though he casts from the uh, graveyard. I'm sure Carador would be willing to cast something from the yard, and then get something for free from the yard, turn it into a 4-4 black zombie. Um, Marin, of course, is getting lots of things into a, and out of the graveyard, and sometimes maybe she needs it right away for combat. Now, these that is sort of cannibalistic, because you're obviously not going to have those creatures available for recasting or bringing them back. Um, Sean, you mentioned Aurelia. How would you use this with Aurelia? Well, as you say, it triggers the beginning of each combat step, not your first and Aurelia gives you extra combat steps. Oh dear, look at that! So, uh, whip your 4 4 Avacyn angel that someone's milled into your deck yard back in, or any of the brilliant angels Aurelia likes to run. Hmm, that uh, Avacyn angel would still be indestructible, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Hmm. <laughs> oh, just note to newer listeners or people newer to the format. Just because this card creates a black zombie doesn't mean its color identity is black, so it can go into non-black decks. That's right. Mm. Um, I would use it in a light recursion, or in a deck that has light recursion in it. Because this, you know, I'm throwing things into the graveyard anyway, and I'm never expecting to get them back, so might as well use this card to get them back for free. Well, this goes straight into my Silumgar deck, which is a clones deck. Oh, yeah. Straight in. Yeah. You could also put this into Felden. And there's diminishing returns there, of course, because Felden's making a copy and putting it on. But sometimes you just need two worm coil engines. Maybe <laughs> one of them needs to be a little weaker than normal. As Ethan Fleischer told me at GP Vegas, the love story of Felden is, No, Wormy, why'd you have to die? Come back. <laughs> yeah. He had an ugly spouse. You know what? <laughs> just saying. Love, is, love, is, love does weird things to us, Phil. Sometimes it Felden brings your spouse back as an undead worm me- mechanism. Sometimes it brings it back as a 4-4 that also dies into a life-linking, death-touching thing. Oh my god, dude, because be this lying. doesn't exile when it dies, your 4-4 cloned uh, um, you worm coil will yeah. still get you two 3-3s. Three That's right. That is dumb. Felden yes. comes home from work. Honey, I'm home. What's for dinner? <laughs> Again? That sounds delicious. Hey. <laughs> I'd be lying if I did not admit to loving a glittering, gigantic metal monstrosity. Or two. <laughs> <laughs> I've, met, I've met your wife, Phil. She didn't look metallic or oh, no. worm-like. No. I'm talking about my first love, Battle Mex. You know who else would love this? Grenzo. Grenzo Dungeon Warden would love this card. Because his ability is... Uh, pay two and put the bottom card of your library into your graveyard. And if it's a creature card with power less than or equal to Grento, you can put it onto the battlefield. But if it just happens to be more, then it can sit there and you can just eternalize them and bring them back later. It would just be a really nice. cute little uh, <laughs> synchronicity. <laughs> wow. If you'd have to, something would have to have gone wrong with your plans A, B, and C, I think. You know what, man? It's Commander. You're going to have a hundred different yeah. ways to do dumb things. Trostani, yep. populate, bring Ooh, back some 4 4 creature and yes. make another one. That would be good. Yeah. Oh, man, that's so, that would be so cool. You could play Trostani with uh, Embalm and then this thing. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Sorry. 
Hmm. Now that's funny. Who else would be good with this card? Gosh, so many people would be good with this card. Well, just be... I just, I think it's good for decks that don't normally run um, heavy recursion. So like Carador and Meron, I think, don't want this card. Um, yeah, but I think not really. decks that you'd really love that don't have easy access to that stuff. So gruel colors. Um, like if you whip in a Malignus, well, Malignus's ability overrides, which is in like every um, Xenogod deck. Malignus's ability overrides it. And <sighs> cards that just don't do great graveyard recursion. Oh, you know what else? Mono red. Yeah, I want to I mean, usually it doesn't get up to seven mana, but if you can get up to seven mana, your plan B is to reanimate all of those goblins you've chucked in. Yeah, that'd be good. Or like Scion of the Ur Dragon, because you're already pitching the guys into the graveyard. Yeah. And you're yeah, you might <laughs> you're gonna turn your uh, your commander into a clone of them, but the body is still sitting there, so you might as well just you know bring him back to the table. I'm just saying. Yeah. Oh, oh, what's that stupid a little weaker, but... dragon that people like to run in that deck? Oh yeah, that's some dumb <laughs> stuff. There's some that's funny. Dumb, dumb stuff you could do with this. Um, if you want to be really mean and you've got the money for it, any deck that runs Survival of the Fist. So for one green, I pitch a card to go get a card out of a creature card out of my deck. I pay another green to pitch that creature card that I wanted into my yard, then gift it back in. Yes. It's almost like Survival of the Fittest is a stupid spell. <laughs> this is that is pretty dumb. That is pretty pretty dumb. All right. Yeah. So two wow. for God two green, gift, effectively put any creature card from your deck onto the table for free as a four four <laughs> zombie. This is just fantastic. I love this card. Guys, do you realize that this card has brought us to Christmas Land? Not like once or even twice, Sorry. but something like three or Do four you times. Mean in <laughs> Christmas never ends. I'm oh, not yeah, sure bolness. that just playing Survival of the Fittest is Magical Christmas Land. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> if, Phil, if your you're Magical right. Christmas Land is a single two drop enchantment, um, no, but it's with this. It's with Christmas this every day for you. <laughs> it is. That's why I play green. Yes, easy mode. But. Um, <laughs> It's just there's so many interesting ways you can just get stupid busted with this card. Because br- I'm just excited about Just clones. the value of bringing another body back that doesn't go away with an ETB trigger or any kind of thing. Like, gosh. I mean... So a comparable card is um, Sneak Attack. And the downside of Sneak Attack is it kills the creature. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Wait, does Sneak Attack <laughs> doesn't end that? No, it sacrifices. Oh, no. Oh, no. So good. Oh, you could Sneak Attack stuff in. <laughs> Sack it at the end of the turn. Next turn, gift it back in. Oh, that is dumb. That is dumb. <laughs> no, that's great. Well. Wow. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of fun with this card. All right, listeners. You got to tell us how you're having that fun. So don't forget to write to us at cast at commander at mtg.com. We have gushed at length about this and uh, we, we, we run the risk of repeating ourselves. But yes, find, um, find cards that let you sacrifice creatures at the end, like something like a ball lightning. Bring your ball lightning back with this card <laughs> next turn. Hey, uh, you know, four, four ball <laughs> just do a... tell us the coolest thing you want to try and if you've managed to create a proxy in the time it's taken you to finish this not that we recommend that but just for testing purposes uh go uh let us know what the sickest thing you've done with it is um and uh that'll be freaking awesome really that's what it comes down to shall we read it again well, one tired. last time for the audience yeah why don't you read it one more time Shiva? all right so god pharaoh's gift an artifact costing seven generic mana. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may exile a creature card from your graveyard. If you do, create a token if that's a copy do. of that card, except it's a 4-4 black zombie. Black zombie. It gains haste mm. until end of turn. <laughs> haste until end of turn. Brought to you by Titus Lunter, one of the best artists we have right now. 
Yeah, there you go. All right. Wow. wow. That is beautiful art, too. I can't it wait look, to see the full. It will get in foil. That blue will shine. Oh, can you imagine a pack foil? Oh, oh it's going to be good time, oh. man. Yeah. All right. It looks like, um, what do we need? We we have to get a pack foil of this, and that means something like four boxes. <laughs> 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 Not gonna lie, this set looks pretty baller already. So, yeah, really this does. set looks mad for Commander. It looks. <laughs> oh my god! Think about it with this Ailey. You sacrifice a dude and you're gaining life, and then you can just bring him back. Oh yeah, there's no. plenty of ways to kill people with this and Ailey. Plenty of ways. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my or god! Tesla. Pharaoh's gift. <laughs> sacrifice it, three white creatures and bring him back. Phil. Phil, end the show before me and she even gets stuck in an eternal loop talking about <laughs> card porn. This is so stupid. It's not even funny. Go, Mandarin!